Richard React Girl is happy to say. Hello, a very warm welcome to Box Park here in London. We have a fabulous show to look forward to on Saturday night, headlined by Richard Riappo and Fabio Turchi. Johnny Nelson is alongside me. This is a bumper night of action. A lot to like about this one. Anna, you know why I like it here at the Box Park? Because food. I, I've just realised this is in my hand. This food beep, but it's going to go off in a minute. I've ordered food. What have you ordered? Uh, a, a chicken wrap, but leave it. Anyway, other, other outlets available. In regards to the show itself, I think the undercard, there's two fights on the undercard that I actually think may end up still in fight of the night. I just spoke to Richard now and I said, he is one of the few fighters that will never struggle with a southpaw because he carries power in both hands. He is capable of making a southpaw and an orthodox southpaw very orthodox because he'd be very careful of making a mistake. Obviously, to beat a southpaw, you've got to lead with a right hand, but you've got to jump with a jab. Richard naturally has that power in that backhand, and, and if he can just let that go, this southpaw is actually may, may be his easiest type of opponent. We know this fight is essentially an opportunity for Richard to take that huge step closer to that world title shot that basically Ben Shalom has promised him should he come through Saturday night. But how tough a test is Turchi for Richard, do you think? Turchi, so he's only lost only two years against uh, Tom McCarthy. Turchi's rated number 11 with the IBF, uh, Richard number 12. So regardless, at this stage, you know, I know this takes an eliminator. Of course, every fight at this stage is an eliminator. The other thing is this: Braden's the champion. If you end up get, if either fighter ends up fighting him, it'll probably be a voluntary from from Braden because you've got number one, number two waiting there. So this is for Braden to look around and think, you know what? I'll fight these guys there. They, they, I can fight them without there being an issue by the IBF. Um, uh, so yes, it's an eliminator. It's one step closer. I think officially to say a final eliminator, I'd be very surprised at that. But if I was any of the champions, uh, be it Macabu, be it Coley, be it uh, Bradis, I would actually fight Richard now before they all marry up the confidence, the ability, they all marry up. Right now, he has all of that, but he doesn't believe what he's got. So you're better off getting, getting this young man before he knows what he's doing. And so, so if there was ever a time for Bradis to turn around and say, yeah, I'll fight, it's now. Well, you've uh, spent a bit of time with Richard. I saw you on Sky Sports News almost get your yes, face yes, punched in. Yes, yes. Um, how's he looking? Uh, strong, strong, sharp, naturally athletic. I was joking saying, you know, there's a guy called, you youngsters might not know his name, uh, Herbie Hyde. Herbie Hyde, former heavyweight WBO champion. This guy, he was naturally strong as an ox. Richard's that guy. He's got that strength, that speed. That, that you can't grow it, you can't eat it, you can't eat that, it's just there with him. And, and it's just actually believing in what he's got. Then he's not going to get trigger happy and think, you know what, I'm just going to bang him out. Because he can box as well. I was about to say, and, and that's something that we have seen improvements under Angel Fernandez, haven't we? Over yeah. the last sort of year or so yeah. that we've seen him on TV. He, he is more than just a, a one punch knockout artist, isn't he? What are we going to see on Saturday night, though? What do you think it's going to come down I to? Think Saturday night is that night where he's got to think to himself, right, I've got to do this, this is me. My beep is going. Johnny's beep is going, <laughs> so he can go and get his food and we can allow the press conference to start. Perfect timing. Good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to you all. I can't tell you how, I'm ex how excited I am to be back here at Wembley and even more excited that Boxer and Sky Sports continue to deliver on their promise of the new era and the next generation of world-class boxing talent. This Saturday, Lauren Price, MBE, your Olympic gold medalist, makes her professional debut. The undefeated Vidal Riley returns back into the ring on a mission to climb the ranks of the cruiserweight division. Chris Tuslick Congo takes on Sebastian Formella for the vacant WBC International Silver Welterweight title. The defending champion Jermaine Brown takes on Zach Jelly for the English Super Middleweight Championship. And of course, your main event, the IBF World Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator.
The Midnight Train collides with the Stone Crusher. Richard Riakpur versus Fabio Turki. On behalf of boxer CEO Ben Shalom, our sponsors Bet365, Everlast, Village Hotels, and Wow Hydrate. Our broadcast partners Sky Sports, a warm welcome as we kick things off right now with the head of boxing development at Sky Sports, Mr. Adam Smith. Thanks very much, uh, Bade. Welcome along. Great to be back in the box park. Uh, fabulous here. And that means we're at Wembley Arena on Saturday night. It's uh, become a bit of a home for Boxer and Sky in uh, recent months. And it is a rip-roaring show on Saturday. We're in the middle of a great period on Sky Boxing. Devon Haney, who became undisputed lightweight champion last weekend. We've got the big pan punching Edgar Belanga this weekend as well. Next weekend, the light heavyweights go to battle. The week after, we're in Coventry with the Young Guns. And then July the 2nd, it's Huey Fury against Michael Hunter and the professional debut of the outstanding Ben Whitaker. So it's a wonderful schedule over the next few weeks, but let's concentrate on what we have here. We've heard from some of the undercard fighters, the likes of uh, TKV and Ebony Jones uh, earlier on. Let's get to the TV portion of the show. And I think all of us at Sky are absolutely delighted that Ben and Boxer have put together such a fantastic card. It really is top to bottom. We start at 7 o'clock on action and main event on Saturday night, and we start with a really, really interesting welterweight clash. Chris Congo, who's done ever so well. He's a really exciting talent in a packed 10 stone 7 division. And in it, he's in with Sebastian Formella, who we know well on Sky. We had him over during the pandemic when he fought Conor Ben, excellent fighter from Germany. And it's a real crossroads clash. Chris, 29 now, and in his 15th outing, a fight he can't afford to lose. But Formella has only been beaten a couple of times by Conor Ben and top level by Sean Porter. Let's get down, first of all, to Sebastian. Welcome. Back to Britain, good to see you. 35 now, you've had a taste of what it's like on, on British soil before. How excited are you about the challenge of Chris Congo on Saturday night? Can you repeat it a little bit slower? So <laughs> you asked me uh, for Saturday, or? <laughs> How excited are you about taking on Chris Congo on Saturday? At first, hello England and London. It's very fine to be again here because we are this time with the public, yes? So it's bigger and the fans from England are maniacs. So it's very cool to fight in the hall with, on Saturday with, uh, with the public. That is one first important thing. And what do you want more? Uh, want more? And, and how highly do you rate Chris Congo? Yes, of course. Uh, Chris Congo is a strong fighter and we prepare for him. And it is a big and difficult exercise for the fight on Saturday. And one thing is very cool. We have an offer eight weeks ago, so I have enough time to prepare for the fight. And it's, I want to say thanks for that to the team of Chris Congo, and we have enough time to prepare for the fight. So it will be a very well and a good fight on Saturday. Excellent that you've had the time. Do you think the experience wins you the fight on Saturday? Yeah, of course. I have the fighting uh, two, three fighters more on the higher level, maybe. But uh, Chris Kong is also a very uh, fighting good fighter. He's a professional and he has a long amateur fight uh, school. So he's a, a fighter on the top level. So we are uh, in the, I think we are in box rack on the world on the top 40. And it's not about who, who winning the fight on Saturday, have the chance to uh, fighting for the big title. So we are both a good fighter. Nice words, Sebastian. Uh, you're very welcome here back in Britain. Chris, it's come to you. Plenty of respect there from a very seasoned and very good fighter. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, just like he said, of course, big up. Uh, uh, love for taking a fight, of course. And uh, it's good to see you guys. Um, here and uh, yeah, man, I'm ready to, to, to put on a show. You're ready to put on a show. You've got 13 victories in your 14, only that one defeat 
on the record. It is a fantastic division, isn't it, the welterweights? Do you believe that you can now? You've got a sort of newish training team and you've got that belief back at you at 29 that you can make a real statement in this division because there's so many good fights out there. Yeah, 100%. But the only main thing I've been focused on for the past six, eight weeks is, is the guy to my left. Um, I, know, I, I know him very well. I've seen him. We've we got film studies on him. And uh, yeah, I just can't show. I can't wait to show what I'm going to do Saturday night. And do you feel you can go one better than Sean and Connor and perhaps force the stoppage? Uh, it's, not, it's not about Connor and uh, Sean. It's about Chris Congo this time. Um, if the stoppage comes, then it comes. We all know that I, I come on stronger later towards the rounds and the fight. But let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to play my part, and I'm sure Sebastian Famila will play his part. Thank you, Chris. Let's bring your promoter, Ben Shalom, in. I know that you're hot on Chris Congo since you signed him, and you're taking a risk here. It's a crossroads clash. Yeah, it is. I think, to be honest, I think it's the perfect opportunity for Chris Congo. It's one we worked hard on. I want to thank Errol Ceylon, Sebastian's manager. It's a fight that we wanted. It's the opportunity that Chris needs. Obviously, we thought from looking afar that he was going to go on to world titles and he fought McKinson and he had a little step back and he's come back strong. But this is where he can make a statement. Obviously, we've seen Formella. He's taken Sean Porter the distance. He's taken Conor Ben the distance as well. He's headline shows in the past. And I think it's a fantastic fight for the car. But most importantly, this is Chris's opportunity. And as you say, it is a bit of a crossroads fight. I think Chris has to perform on Saturday night and has to show why he is world level. And um, if, he can put, if he can knock him out, he makes a massive statement on Saturday night. And uh, obviously, it's over to Chris now. It's a fantastic start to the show as well. A great matchup to kick off. Then we move into the cruiserweight division and we're watching the progress with interest of Vidal Riley who will meet Jonah Vellao who's here uh, today. Jonah let's come to you. I know you're a reserve uh, for the recent tournament series. You didn't get that opportunity. How, how pleased are you that you've got this chance of taking on a man like Vidal Riley who's, who's coming with an unbeaten record and, uh, and obviously a, a name for the future? I'm blessed and uh, grateful for being here on the show. Thanks a lot, sirs, for the introduction. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on Sky as well. Uh, this is my second job, obviously. I'm a full-time serving soldier. I've been in the Army 20 years. And getting uh, on a big stage like this is unreal. And I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, he's a young star, up-and-coming talent. And I'm looking forward, obviously, to put on a good fight on the night. And uh, for me, I always come. I always turn up for a good, good terror. And we salute you for being that soldier and for managing to fight at the same <laughs> yes, time sir, as well. You. But you're a good amateur as well, didn't you? You had a, a couple of dust-ups with Fraser Clark. Uh, yeah, obviously, Fraser Clark was back in the days when I was amateur. We had a good dust-up in, uh, was back in the day, in, uh, I think it was 2011 or 2010. Um, for him, obviously, fingers crossed, he's back on track. Uh, and obviously, I'm sure he's with Sky as well. And I'm sure he's got a great uh, future ahead of him as well. We hope so. Good luck on Saturday. Vidal, yes. down to you. Um, Exciting times. You want to get going. You want momentum. We, uh, we need to see more of you, don't we? That's it. That's it. That's why I'm here. You know, one thing I've missed is consistency and building that momentum as a professional. And now I'm here with Boxer and Sky. That's what's going to happen. Um, you've seen me box February 19th, Calm Brook. Now June 11th. Hopefully two more or more by the end of the year. And then you'll start to see the best of me. I think we can see I've got the potential. I can talk for the country, but it's about the hands. So um, I'm glad I'm going to get the chance to show that more often. And you keep telling me it's all about boxing now. That's the focus. You're 24. You're young enough to make a real impression in what is a phenomenal division, the Cruiserweights, isn't it? Listen, Cruiserweight has talent from top to bottom. Um, as we can see, you know, we've got the world title eliminator with Richard in there. We've got Chris Bill and Smith. There's a lot of names, but those are not my focus. My focus is John Villar for Saturday tick that box and then we'll think about the next one. What are the live Sky viewers going to see? You've got a prime time slot here, Vidal. It's the homecoming. I had to get a prime time spot. It's the homecoming. A box around the world. Had a good time doing that, but now I'm here in London. I'm putting on a show. I've said that and I'm going to do it. Thanks very much, Ben. Of course, you're sitting next to Richard React. Paul, the cruiserweight division is, uh, is alive and well. It's, uh, it's a wonderful uh, brigade. Can Vidal play a, a part and how soon? 
Hundred percent. I mean, the level of interest in Vidal Riley is incredible. I mean, we don't always see it in the in in the boxing world, but we've had, you know, YouTubers, footballers, sports stars. He's so well respected across so many industries, and uh, for for that to be his fifth fight, it shows perhaps how big his fan base can grow. I think it's honestly incredible, and we'll see that on Saturday night. I think what he'll be keen to show is that he's a serious fighter as well. You only have to look at his amateur record to see that he's serious. He's beaten the likes of Chris Billen Smith, who now is considered one of the one of the top guys in Britain in the cruiser rate division. So he's got everything Vidal. But one thing one thing that people need to remember is he's a serious, serious fighter. And uh, obviously we'll see all the glitz and glamour on Saturday night, but he wants to move quickly. This is his fifth fight, and I think he wants titles within the next 12 months. He is a serious fighter, but how important is it to get these crossover stars, the one that's, that they're known on social media, they're, they're part of the young coming through? It is important. I mean, we say to all our fighters, whether it's Zach Chelly, who's in a big fight against Jermaine Brown on Saturday night as well, it's about becoming, showing who you are, showing your personality, showing the public what, what you're about. And Vidal Riley knows how to do that. And as I say, he's so well respected. He has a huge, huge following. And uh, it's important because we want to grow the sport. And he's very passionate about growing the sport and passionate about growing the importance of the cruiserweight division. And I think he's going to do that for the rest of his career. So, yeah, it's exciting for us and it's exciting for him. And uh, I can't wait to see the homecoming on Saturday night. And really good fighters to more really good fighters. Ben mentioned Zach Chelly, who's uh, really impressed us uh, of late, both in and out of the ring. Been doing a bit of teaching as well, encouraging the, the youth of tomorrow. But it's all about this fight for you, Zach, on Saturday night. It's uh, a chance for you against the English champion who's been performing brilliantly of late, Jermaine Brown. It's another cracking 50-50 fight that we see, the puncher and the boxer on paper. Is this what you need at this stage of your career, Zach? Yeah, once again, I'd like to say thank you very much, Box and Sky, for having me on another great show. Um, I know I heard you say I'm, I'm the puncher, he's the boxer, but I'm going to show you on, on Saturday night that I am the boxer and the puncher and with a lovely finish. How confident are you that Jermaine Brown will make you perform your best, that we maybe haven't seen that definitive performance yet from you? Um, yeah, the better the boxer, the better I perform. My last opponent was unbeaten. Similar record to Jermaine, I managed to stop him because I was, people were expecting me to stop him. This one, people expect me to box. Um, he is a better boxer. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But of course, I'm gonna come in. I've been training really hard, 100%, uh, even harder than my last fights. I actually quit my job as a teacher, just fully focused on this fight, train twice a day, I'm more than ready. You're chomping at the bit, aren't you? This super middleweight division is there and you want to be a real part of it, Zach. Yeah, of course, um, super middleweight division looks really good at the moment. Um, with Lennox Clark of the British and Commonwealth, uh, Zach Parker's there. You've got Laurent Richard with the only world title available because Canelo has them all. So yeah, I'd love to make my name and put myself on the map. Thank you, Zach. You've got to beat the champion, though, and he's been impressing of late, fantastic performance on the Carnbrook stage. The English champion, Jermaine Brown, undefeated in 12. Is this just another day at the office for you, Jermaine? You, you're continuing to really perform here. Yes, it's another fight, you know. Um, take all fights seriously, and it's another serious fight for me. Um, say it's another 50-50. They've said that for like all my other fights, like my last three or four. Um, so I'm just gonna train. I've been training hard. I've been putting in the work. I know that Chile's a good fighter, and um, it's prepared and we're ready. Uh, me and my team come up with a good game plan, and uh, Saturday night we're just gonna execute it. Does it irritate you that we keep saying they're 50-50 fights, and you keep seeming to find the answer each and every time, or does that motivate you that you're in good matches and that you're you're shining at this sort of level? No, I think it motivates me definitely, and it shows that. Um, I'm willing to take the 50-50 fights because some boxers, if we hear 50-50 fight, they're not as like on it at all. So for me, when they say it's a 50-50 fight, it shows that I'm willing to take the risk and put in the work. We're really excited and we thank you for taking these sort of fights. How dangerous do you think Zach Chelly is finally? Um, I'm going to find out. Um, they say he's a big puncher, but on his record, anyone that's half decent, he hasn't stopped. So we we'll have to wait and see on Saturday. It's another one, Ben. It's another one that we're looking forward to. Yeah, this one in particular, I think um, 
We've not even seen Jermaine Brown break a sweat yet. I think he works so hard in the gym. He prepares so well. He's, he's a very technical boxer. He's dealt with, you know, Jamal Ledoux very comfortably. Then Charlie Schofield on the Calm Brook card, who many considered a tough fight and was well rated up in Manchester. And now Zach Shelley, who we also know extremely well, won our boxer tournament. One last time out against Jack Kilgannon with in explosive fashion, to be honest, and it's a complete clash of styles. One thing I do know is both of these guys give it absolutely everything, and uh, I respect them massively. And win or lose, both these fighters will, will come out of this very well. But um, it's an impossible fight to call. I wish them both the best luck, and uh, may the best man win. That's what we want, impossible fights to call. Jermaine Brown, Zach Shelley meet for the English super middleweight title on Saturday night. I'm just going to stay with Ben for a moment before I go to the young lady down to the far right of the dais. This is a special moment for everybody at Boxer and at Sky as the wonderful Lauren Price turns professional. She cleaned up as an amateur, but not only as a boxing amateur, she's won world titles in kickboxing, she's represented Wales on the football field. She really is an absolute phenomenon. So just to say a few words before we go to Lauren, Ben Shalom, how pleased are you that she is, well, going to be a flag bearer under your banner? Well, I think you're as pleased as me. We worked, uh, we worked so hard on this. I think Sky have been a massive supporter of women's boxing, but particularly since I came in in October with Boxer, it's been a massive focus of us. And si since then, we've seen huge fights happen on, on both platforms. We've seen Taylor Serrano, we've obviously got Shields Marshall to come, and it's a perfect time to turn over. I imagine when Lauren was a footballer or a kickboxer, she probably looked at professional women's boxing and didn't see huge opportunity there, and I think now she can see how far this sport can go, and I think she can take it to new heights. I don't think we've ever seen someone as decorated and as accomplished as she has. I don't think we're ever going to see someone that can move through the weights like she can, that's as talented as she is. And she now has the platform to do it. And she'll be looking at the Savannah Marshalls, the Katie Taylors, even the Tasha Jonases, and, and wanting to take it a step further. And so it's, it's so exciting to be here at the start of her career, her debut, the one that she'll remember, the one that we'll remember, hopefully in many years to come and look back on when she's fighting for world titles across many different weight divisions. And uh, yeah, it's, it was a long road, but we're very, very happy she's here. We're very obviously happy that Carrie Sartingstall and Caroline Dubois as well decided to join us. And uh, it's going to be a special era of women's boxing, I'm convinced. Yeah, the power couple, Karis and Lauren Karras, will be turning professional uh, very shortly. She's uh, obviously here today to support Lauren. Lauren, let's come to you. Um, a stellar amateur career, um, but a professional debut is different. Is it something you've always dreamt about and you're now on this sort of stage are there nerves are there butterflies or you just can't wait to get started yeah to, to be honest um i'm just looking forward to it more than anything tokyo seems like a lifetime ago now it's coming up nearly a year but yeah like you said ticked every box as an amateur um from the age of eight it was my dream you know to go to the olympics and you know i done that one goal topped it off and now the new journey starts and the new dream is, you know, to, to become world champion. But at the minute, I'm just going to take each fight as it comes, little step ups each time. And I'm just looking forward to, to the journey. It's been a journey getting you to sign with Boxer and Sky. It was a, a long battle. What was it that swung? Was it the platform? Was it Ben Shalom's good looks? What was it that made you uh, sign for Boxer and Sky? Uh, yeah, for me, um, me and Karis, we come back from uh, Tokyo and you know what it's like. Everyone just, you know, jumped on us and we didn't know what was happening really. It was all new to us, this pro game. Uh, we went away for a bit, come back and um, yeah, like you said, we, it's, like Ben said, it's taken a while. We've been negotiating for a while, but yeah, we were 100%, you know, in the end, for me and Karis, there's no bigger platform than, than Sky Sports. And i got to say, for Ben himself, um, even, well, me and Karis have been watching the shows, and I say, from uh, the Eubanks and Williams show in Cardiff, for me, every show just, you know, improved and gone bigger. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited, and I, I couldn't imagine, you know, boxing on any other platform. So, yeah, I'm over the moon.
And there seems to be real momentum with your fellow Olympians as well, Caroline Dubois, Fraser Clark, Ben Whitaker. You're not alone here, are you? You're all part of a, a group that hopefully can all become world champions. Yeah, definitely, hopefully. Well, maybe we'll have our uh, own card, you know, the Olympians card, who knows? So let's look at this fight. Valgadir uh, Gudenstottedir, if I pronounce that right. She's won five of seven. Um, do you know much about her? Have you seen a lot of her? Or do you just go in and do what Lauren Price does? I'll be honest with you. I don't have a clue. All I know, she's from Iceland. Um, for me, I'll just, you know, what I've been working on, um, don't change for anyone. And just, you know, showcase my skills, a bit what I'm about. Been working now for a few months uh, with Rob McCracken. You know, he knows the game inside out. And I suppose new weight as well. So as an amateur, I had to give a lot of weight away. Uh, fighting three threes, I had to have that explosive style, you know, in and out on my feet with, with fast combinations and stuff like that. Whereas where I've come down now for 147, I got that opportunity, you know, to sit down on my shots a little bit more, make it a little bit more exciting, throw a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm really excited, you know, to showcase what I've been working on. And finally, Robert McCracken told me time and time again, you're the greatest female fighter he's seen, he's worked with. Does that put pressure on your shoulders or does that encourage you that one day we'll be looking back and it will be a, a glorious professional journey with many world titles? Oh, yeah, 100%. I don't look at it as pressure. You know, that's, that's, that's like obviously a great thing for Rob to say. He've, he've obviously worked with the likes of, you know, Licker Adams, Savannah Marshall and people like that. So, yeah, I'm very humbled by that. But, yeah, for me, I just take each, each step in, in my stride and... Like you said, take each fight as it comes, little step ups in between, and, and we'll get there. Good luck Saturday night, Lauren, as the journey begins. Thank, Thank you, Karis. Thank you, Lauren, for joining us and our new adventure with Boxer and Sky. So to the top of the bill, and it's a cracker, it really is. It was a fight that was meant to happen a, a few weeks ago. We know that it didn't. Leon Juma came in and uh, gave Richard Riappel plenty to think about, Battle of the Unbeatens that night. But he's got to go in with international opposition and a really good fighter in Fabio Turchi from Italy. Um, we know him well. He's won 20 of 21. Before I go to Fabio, I want just to uh, welcome a very, very good friend of mine, um, a great man from uh, not just Italy, but, but boxing generally in, in Christian Kirk. Christian, great to see you. Um, wonderful to have Fabio with us. And you love great fights, don't you? And this should be another one. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Ben. Uh, yes, this is a, a good fight. I think it's a proper uh, world title eliminator. Even with the approval IBF or not, uh, I think the winner uh, will be in line to fight one of the champions. So we had, uh, like you say, a uh, delay of a few weeks. But now everything is set. Uh, they are ready. And uh, I really hope it will be a good fight. Let's bring Fabio in. Fabio. 28 now, um, only one defeat on the record. That was a tight decision defeat to Tommy McCarthy, we know. Firstly, has the, the break helped you? Have you now got everything in order to beat Richard Riakpour on Saturday? Innanzitutto buongiorno a tutti, sono molto contento di essere a Londra in Inghilterra dove il pubblico è semplicemente fantastico. E, sì, questo break mi ha dato sicuramente più tempo per prepararmi, per studiare ancora di più Riakpor, quindi sono, sono molto preparato e sono pronto a dare battaglia sabato sera sul ring. First of all, good morning everybody. Uh, very happy to be in London where the fans are the number one. And uh, yes, this break uh, helped me to prepare better this fight. And uh, I hope uh, I, I'm ready to have a battle on Saturday night. You're 28, you're four years younger than Richard, but you've got more experience, more fights on the record. Do you think that will? help you on, on Saturday, and that uh, maybe Richard Riakpour is not ready for you yet.
No, penso che sia assolutamente un match equilibrato, ho molta stima e rispetto per Riakpor sia come pugile che come uomo e sono sicuro che sabato sera sarà una grandissima battaglia sul ring. No, no, I think it's uh, an even fight and I have a lot of respect of Richa as a boxer and uh, as a man and uh, I hope it will be a, a great fight. Finally, how do you beat him? Ai punti o per capo fa lo stesso, l'importante è vincere. By knockout or by points, the important is to win, doesn't matter how. By knockout or by points, the important thing is to win. The W is all important, Richard Riakpour. You've got 14 of them, you've never lost. Is this just another step on the midnight trains uh, rolling on, I guess, towards world title uh, tilts? This is the final eliminator. It's a fight you were going to have a few weeks ago, so you know all about Fabio Turchi. Is it the right fight at the right time for you now? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's perfect, perfect timing. I wanted uh, Fabio Turchi prior to Dion Juma. Obviously, that fell through because of whatever reason, but um, we finally made it happen. So big respect to Fabio for taking a fight. And um, this is perfect. This is perfect for me. It's perfect for us because it sets, up, sets us up for a big world title clash after this. So um, there's a lot to fight for. Now, Dion Jumo, you know, was, was excellent, boxed well at times, but you had too much power for him. This is a guy who's got 14 knockouts in his 20 victories. There's a lot of, lot of concussive power in that ring on Saturday, isn't there? You've got to be careful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, didn't take him lightly in, in training and preparation for this fight. Um, we made sure that we covered um, all, all, areas, all areas to make sure that we're ready to deliver what we want to deliver on the night. And it's another training camp with a really good setup there with AJ, Fraser Clark, Angel Hernandez. And it's, it's surely going to bring you on now as it becomes crunch time in the cruiserweight division. Every fight now. Yeah, every single fight is so important. And, you know, the, the, the camp, the team, my stable mates um, are amazing. You know, we have Anthony Joshua. He's achieved so much. Um, we aspire to be where he is. Um, Fraser Clark, he um, medaled at the Olympics. You know, um, the energy is, is high in the gym. Everybody wants to show that they're the best. We've got Kieran Malloy. Everybody's hungry, and um, that's the difference, and that's what people are going to see on Saturday night. Are you soaking it up like a, a sponge? You're an intelligent young man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, this is what I dreamed of, of doing when I was young, when I first came to this game. And um, just to see it all manifesting... Um, the, way my dream, the, the way I dreamed of it too is, is fascinating, honestly. So I'm soaking it up and I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I just want to bring Ben Shalom in. He's got the looks. He's got the affinity with Crystal Palace. He's got the knockout power. He's getting known. Is he going to become a real big star, do you think? I think he's going to become a massive star. I think he was probably the first boxer I called once, once, once we did the Sky deal. And uh, I think we talked about how can we get to this position? How can Richard be headlining shows? How can we become the star that we know he can be? And we've done it fairly quickly. And uh, I think now when I'm out with him, because we spend time each, with each other outside of boxing, everyone's stopping in the street. People know who Richard Riappor is. He has everything it takes to be a star outside of the ring. And now it's about giving them the opportunities inside of the ring. And every time he's, he's like an annoying sort of Man United team, he always finds a way to win. He always finds a way to win, whether it's been Tommy McCarthy, whether it's been Chris Billen-Smith, whether it's been Jack Massey, whether it's been Dion Juma, whether it's been Sam Hyde. They might all talk and say, oh, well, if this happened in this fight or this happened in this fight, Richard always finds a way to win, and he's done that whilst learning. And now we're seeing a real fighter come to the forefront with huge power, with everything that no one wants to face. But this is a big fight for him, and this is a tough fight for him. And as you said, Turchi... He's never, ever lost up until the Tommy McCarthy split decision. He's got good wins on his record as well. And he's got that knockout power. So he's going to have to be careful. And this is, his, this is his springboard into world title contention. It's a banana skin for Richard. It's a really good matchup. If he does come through, if he does make the sort of statement you obviously believe he can, how quickly will he be then pushed into a world title challenge? 
I don't think he, he'll be pushed. I think he's looking for it. I think he's not scared of any of the world title holders at the moment. He'll, he'll take any of them. He's ready for it. For the first time, people are coming up to me and saying, when's Richard going to find Lawrence Acoli? When's he going to... You know, a year ago, no one was asking those questions. That shows how far we've come now. People are seeing him in that bracket. People know he's, he's ready for world titles, and this is another test. And with that knockout power... There won't be one cruiserweight in the world that wants to get in the ring with Richard, and, and that's what's exciting, and it will be next. Richard, we know there's tickets to the Crystal Palace box, there's modelling contracts and all that at the moment, but it's what happens in the ring, isn't it, that matters. What will you deliver on Saturday night for the Wembley crowd? So, yeah, I've, um, yeah everything else comes secondary. You know, boxing is number one, and we want to bring explosive nights, explosive finishes, and we want to show the world how great we are. So we're definitely going for the knockout. And um, I've had a few dreams, you know. I just feel like um, Fabio is going to get really hurt on Saturday night. The midnight train will roll on. Finally, will you become a world champion within the next six to nine months? Absolutely. That's all we want to know. Richard Riatpour, Fabio Turchi, tops a wonderful bill here at Wembley Arena on Saturday night. We've got undercard streaming from 5.30, 7 o'clock on uh, main event and on action. Don't miss any of it. We kick off with that Chris Congo, Sebastian Formella fight. And from then, it is just great action all the way. It's a seriously good show. So if you can't get there, watch it live on Sky. The fighters will... Uh, Pose for some face-to-face, -face, some head-to-heads, and I'm sure you'll get whatever interviews you'd like. We'll see you here for the weigh-in tomorrow. Thank you to Box Park. Thank you to Boxer for making this show happen. Macklin has joined me alongside me. This, this, is, this is set to be a good night, Matt. Yeah, definitely a good card from, from start to finish. Um, I mean, probably the, the least competitive fight on it, you would imagine on paper going in anyway, is Lauren Price's debut, but then it's the debut of what should be a truly monumental, amazing journey. So that ticks that box. And then, you know, if you look at the main, the main event, again, Rapport favorite, but you know, the guy he's fighting has only lost once to Tommy McCarthy, Rack Paul beat McCarthy, Styles make fights. So, you know, it's another, it's a good opponent and it's a step in the right direction. Well, we're looking at Lauren Price now. I mean, it is a big night for her on Saturday night. A new chapter in her career turning pro. I mean, she's had a glittering amateur career, hasn't she? Olympic gold medalist. She's pretty much excelled at every single sport under the sun. But, but again, there's, there's quite a bit of fanfare to this turning over, isn't there? Which also brings a lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. But it's, it's a little bit, it reminds me a little bit of Katie Taylor because she was a gifted sports uh, star as well in, in other sports before boxing. So she's just naturally gifted, hand-to-eye coordination, athletic, got probably that inner desire to achieve and win and very competitive. Um, but as you say, a completely decorated amateur, brilliant, got Olympic gold medalist, Rob McCracken, says so the best woman boxer he's ever worked with um, and, and, and other people as well who, who are good judges who have really been involved in the women's boxing Brian Peters Matt, Kate Taylor's manager he, he, he was very hot on her as well he said she's, she should go all the way well Karis Artisal who's Lauren's partner they obviously live together I can imagine that household this week is, is a, a house full of nerves excitement anticipation all of the above all of the above and more you know um I was thinking about that. Imagine what it must be like for them in that house if, they, if they're boxing on the same card. Or maybe they've agreed that they I, won't I think box. When I spoke to them up in Sheffield um, a couple of months ago, I think the agreement is that, that that's that not going to happen because they both want to watch each other. And also, can you imagine how, how tense that would be? Yeah, well, imagine if, you, if one 
what the one before got beaten like that's going to completely derail the one then that's got to try and stay focused for their fight so i think that's a very wise uh, decision from both of them to just agree make that agreement now but for career wise and relationship wise now this <laughs> this is a fight i'm very much looking forward to see jermaine brown versus zach Chelly. this this probably has the potential. It could be fight of the night, Matt. I would say it is fight of the night. Looking on the, looking on paper going in. Again, you never know until they get in there. But you know, stars make fights. It's probably the hardest one to pick a winner in. Um, Jermaine Brown's had good activity. He's been stayed busy. He's probably the boxer, isn't he? Chelly, Chelly's the puncher, as Adam said. But what is it going to come down to? Yeah, I think. I think has Brown got the power? to keep Chelly at bay. I don't know if he has. He's a good boxer, a uh, nice technical boxer. I don't know if he's got the pop to keep Chelly at bay, but we'll see. But it is one of those that, on paper, it has the potential to be a really, really good scrap, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it'll be close. I think, um, I, 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 like I said, I don't know if he's got the power to keep Chelly off, but at the same time, has as, as Chelly got the power to take him out? I'm not sure. It's, but it's, it's, it's very evenly matched. This is a good fight. Yeah, well. another, another good fight. Chris Congo versus Sebastian Formella. This fight... I mean, yes, it's a crossroads fight, but it's also it's, it's a fight to see really where where Chris is at, isn't it? It's, it's a good yardstick because Formella, he's been in with the likes of Conor Ben, Sean Porter, only lost to those two, but he hasn't been put down. I guess if Chris manages to do that on Saturday night, how much of a statement would that be? Yeah, you, you took the word out of my mouth. It's a really good yardstick. It's a, it's a perfect fight to gauge where Chris is at. You know, he's got he had that loss against McKinson, but McKinson's decent. You know, he, he's very he's very awkward. He got a bad start in that fight as well, and then he was playing catch up, trying to chase the fight. You don't want to chase the fight against the. Uh, a counterpunch in Southpaw, um, but Formella is tough. He's durable. He's gone the distance with um, Sean Porter, also kind of bent. So you know, if, if if Chris was to go in there and stop him, then that that really sort of rockets his name right up there. Now, what are you reading into this? A little bit of a stare down, head to head. I don't, I'm not reading too much into it, what you'd expect. But look, this is a good fight. I think Rapport is definitely favourite. Um, but Turchi, I don't think he's here just to, to roll over and make up the numbers. He's got his, he'll sit, he's going to try and nick the, uh, he's going to try and steal the show here. And uh, Exactly. Just how, how much, though, is riding on this, particularly for Richard Riatbor, because we know that that world title shot, it's within touching distance, basically, if he comes through on Saturday night, isn't it? So that, that's a huge opportunity for him. Everything outside of the ring is, is going perfectly for him. The modelling, everything like that, the contracts. He's got the momentum behind him, but how much is riding on that fight? Well, <laughs> everything, You've got to stand the <laughs> every, everything is riding on it because if he loses on Saturday night, all the uh, all the, the, the reputation, the, the, the all the accolades that he's built up, uh, you know, over the last sort of 12, 12 months, um, you know, it go, goes out the window, doesn't it? So, you know, when you're at this stage, it's every fight. Listen, at every stage of your career, it's must win because it it puts you on a different path if you lose, but. You know, he's, he's, he's so close to getting a uh, shot at the world title, it would be catastrophic for him if he was to lose. So it's not even, you're not even thinking about the possibility of defeat at this stage. He's just focused on winning. You, you can guess what I've just asked, Matt. Yeah. You seem really, really chill, very confident. Seeing you all over the place on the TV in the build up to this. I've asked Matt that question. How much is riding on this for you? Uh, everything, everything. And just like Matt said, like, every single fight is so important even the even the initial fights you know fighting against journeyman just trying to build a record like every single fight was important to get me to the stage now and we're taking it very very seriously and we did you know during the preparation for this fight um yeah we just know what we need to do i'm very relaxed because you know i've been here a few times now um i know how it goes i know how fight week is i know what i need to do i know um my last fight, I don't know what, how I needed to improve to make a better performance, make a better statement. So yeah, I just, I'm just chilled and, and focused on the task at hand. What improvements do you think that you've made over the last few fights? I think you've seen a, um, a few different improvements. So like, I guess my boxing skill, Angel's added, added a lot of skill to me, like made me a bit more dynamic, you know, I can box a bit. You know, move around. I have better. I think I have the best footwork in the game, honestly, in in, in the cruiserweight division. And people don't notice, but soon they will notice. My balance, my foundation is on point, and um, good jab. You know, what I mean, all of the basics. Then after that, tuning in the aggression. You saw that bit with Dura Dollar. 
you know, you can see I can be patient with, with Dion. We're, we're versatile, we're bringing something different every single time and we're adapting to whatever is in front of us. So then the question is, what, what are we going to see on Saturday night? Are you going to look to be making a statement? Are we going to see that huge one-punch power that we know you've got? Or are we going to see a bit more to your game? What are we going to see? Yeah, you're going to see everything. You're going to see the punch power 100%. Um, you know, I've got a 100% hurt record. So, you know, if I do land, and I think even if I land partially, I think it will be um, it'll, he will be in trouble 100%. And he's going to be hurt in this fight. So what's going to happen? How do you beat him? Knock him out. Simple. Nice and simple. Yeah, I, th I think he knocks him out. Uh, it's interesting because he, he was very patient against Juma, but against Sam Hyde, I thought he was hesitant. You know, even though he was probably fighting at the yeah, same yeah. pace, there was a difference. He was hesitant against Sam Hyde, but you could see the maturity and the, the inner confidence against Juma. He, he knows he's got that equaliser. You, know, you might be, you might be winning, you might be winning the battles, but I'm winning the war. You know, you might, sometimes you're going to give him a round away. But if the fight's going where you want it to go, you're manoeuvring him and you're, you're seeing how he's reacting. That, that's okay, especially if you've got that power. If you haven't got the power and you can't turn things around, then maybe you don't want someone building up too much of a lead. But when you when you can, you got the equaliser. Then it, as long as the fight's going in the direction that you want it to, then you can do that. It's interesting what you said up there about being in the gym with Fraser, with AJ, and, and others. How much is that helping you? Do you think in terms of not just in the ring, but also confidence out of it as well? Yeah, a lot. It's helping me a lot, and like the mentality which is very important in this game. You know, even Kasimao said like it's, it's about 80% mental. So like being around him and listening to the trials and tribulations he had to overcome and things that he's facing now and how he just, you know, still managed to come down to the, to the gym to train. You have to respect it, even after what he's, um, what he's made in the sport. You know, it's a lot, a lot of people would say, yeah, if I make this much money or achieve all these goals, I'll still be in the gym, I'll still be. It's one thing saying it, and it's another thing doing it. So if he's doing it, then I have no excuses. You know what I mean? I'm nowhere near him. You know, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm on the come up. But um, I want to achieve what he's, he wants to achieve. But seeing him do that is molding me mentally. So when I do achieve what I want to achieve, it's like I'm still going to be conducting myself as a proper professional boxer. We always say success means success, don't we? Being around that environment, how much it helps? Yeah, huge. I mean, the one thing that probably Richard, look, he's got the athletic ability, he's got that power which no one can teach you, you've either got it or you haven't. What he doesn't have, and he's gaining now, is experience, it's, it's, it's know-how, it's, it's going through certain situations, it's alright listening to someone else um, tell you about it, and that does help, so he's round AJ and he'll be, and that, that's brilliant, but to go here again, he's getting used, like I said, it's not his first rodeo, he's used to it, he knows how he's going to feel, he knows how he's going to feel the preparation of the day, and it, it just, you're just, you're just growing all the time. Are you looking beyond Saturday night? I know we keep talking about that world title shot, Is it, it's, it's literally within touching distance, isn't it? Are you allowing yourself to think about that, or are you just all eyes on Fabio Turchin? I'm just focused on who is in front of me, everything else is speculation, it's things that don't exist. I, what exists is Fabio Turchi right now, and um, I'm going to see him on Saturday night. You know, this man's come to take away everything that I worked for. He's going to get a very rude awakening on Saturday night. Feeling good making weight tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. I'm, I'm pretty much on weight now. Yeah. You're big for yeah. the weight, though. You're yeah, big. I'm big. I, yeah. I, you'll see. I, I do feel out. I feel out quite a lot, and uh, I think I'll be uh, very big compared to Fabio, you know, on Saturday night. But. Um, we're professional, we're professional, we do it properly and I've never missed a, um, a weight in my life, you know, and, or, or professional. Andy Scott and I were saying, while you're all up there, this has got to be possibly the worst place to do a press conference in, surrounded by food, food when you've got to make weight. <laughs> I can just see all eyes are going down thinking, don't look at the fried chicken, don't look at the fish and chips. And your sense of smell is just so much stronger yeah. as well. <laughs> just think, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, see you tomorrow, guys. Okay. Yeah. It's true though, isn't it? Oh, completely. Your, your sense of smell is Purgatory. terrific. Yeah, terrible. Though. It's just like, you know, you wouldn't mind if you'd lose a few pounds by putting yourself through the torture, but you don't. So you've got to go through that torture for no gain at all. So if you could pick one fight on Saturday night, which one is catching your eye? Um, I think probably the, the, the toughest one to pick a winner for is pro probably um, Zach Chelly and Jermaine Brown. Um, uh, uh, you know, that's a hard one to pick, I think. But I like, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Lauren Price, I have to say, because I've heard, I, I've seen her in the Olympics, of course. But you know, She's someone to really get excited yeah, about, isn't so. she? I do, I, I really do. I think she's someone that's gonna 
you know, look, Katie Taylor has been the trailblazer of women's boxing. And, you know, the next generation that comes behind you, that you hope that they can take it a step further. And maybe, maybe she's the one that can do that. Um, main event, React Poor. I, I always like watching him fight because he's, he's got that dynamite power. So he's exciting. And he's also used to headlining now, isn't it? This is all all another day in the office for him. Yeah, he's, this is his home venue. You know, he's getting used to this now. His confidence, he's starting to believe in himself more. He, he'll be implementing things that he's working on in the gym. He'll be bringing it into his fight. He's, he's, he's a work in progress, which we say a work in progress. He's nearly there, but he's still improving. And um, I, I, I actually think the way the cruiserweight division's opening up as well, I think, I think he can win a world title. Exciting to watch, definitely. Um, right, you can go and fill your face. The oh. fighters, they've got one more day, then they can taste some of the delights around here. Join us tomorrow for that weigh-in and the final face-off ahead of a huge night on Saturday night.